Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the CSB Bank Q3 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by YES Securities. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shivaji Tapriyal from YES Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Dorvin. Uh, good evening and a warm welcome to all those who have joined the call. The CSB Bank Management is represented by Mr. Pralay Mandal, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Satish Gundevar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. B.K. Divakara, Head Strategy and Corporate Legal. We specifically thank the management of CSB Bank for giving Yes Securities the opportunity to host their result call. Uh, the management will first be making some opening remarks, after which we will throw the floor open for questions. I now invite the management to make their opening remarks. Salai, over to you. Thank you, Shivaji and Arvind. Thank you so much for uh, uh, hosting this call. And thank you all of you for joining our post results call of Q3 uh, FY24. Uh, to start with, I think globally the high rate regime has picked out with many central banks now indicating a pause and a subsequent cut in rates. The inflation has also moderated significantly despite some uptick last month due to this effect. Geopolitical risks are a persist. Prolonged uh, Red Sea blockages could spike the oil prices again. With this probability of rate cuts in the next uh, one year has come down to three from five in the US and Eurozone has extended its pause at least till June 2024. On the domestic side, I think uh, Indian inflation has slowed some moderation, though the CPI turned higher to 5.69 point, uh, from 5.55 in November, though it was slightly better than what was expected. On an average basis, the core and headline numbers are showing uh, moderating trends. This also suggests that the rate hike cycle in India has peaked and more inclined towards moderation in future. The main concern, however, has been the persistent liquidity deficit in the banking system, which even touched 3 lakh crores in the recent past. It adds to bank borrowings and deposit costs. We expect the liquidity conditions to improve in FY24-25. With credit growth outpacing the deposit growth in the banking sector, even in this last quarter, the deposits are likely to remain elevated in the uh, entire FY23-24. On CSB numbers, uh, we had a steady Q3, uh, and we could grow faster than the system maintaining a mean above 5% both on a quarterly, quarterly and a nine-month basis. Highlights of our performances are as uh, below. The bank declared a net profit of 415 crore for the nine months ended 31-12-23, up by 6% over the corresponding uh, period last year. Q3 FY24 PAT at 150 crores, 13% increase over Q2 FY24. Operating profit witness growth of 9% on a nine month uh, YOI basis. Q3 FY24 is up by 12% over Q2 FY24. Provisioning buffer of uh, 166, uh, 167 crores uh, over and above the regulatory requirements has been taken. Despite margins being under pressure for most of the banks in a highly volatile market, we could maintain a mean of about 5% on both a nine monthly basis and a quart uh, quarterly basis at 5.11 and 5.10 respectively. On a sequential basis, cost of deposits increased from 5.22% to 5.42%, while yield on advances improved from 10.88 to 11.49%. Held the ROA of 1.78, and 1.84 as on 31, 12, uh, 23 on a nine month and quarterly basis annualized respectively. Um, on the liability side, deposit grew by around 21% YOY as against the industry growth of 13%. CASA, we had a muted growth relatively at around 6% YOY. 
and TD grew by around 27% YOY. On the asset side, net advances grew by 23% YOY. Industry uh, had grown uh, around uh, 16% without the merger impact. Uh, gold portfolio registered a growth of 23% YOY on a net basis. Portfolio buildup has happened across all sectors. Gold, other retail advances, and SME did well in the quarter with a YOI growth of 33%, 44%, and 28% respectively. On a YOI nine-month basis, our yield on advances improved by 39 bips to 11.19%. On the asset quality matrices, uh, stable asset quality, GNPA 1.22, NNPA 0.31, PCR of uh, 75%, uh, without write-off, and uh, uh, we continue to with accelerated loan provisioning policy in excess of RBI requirements. On the capital side, CRAR of 22.99%, uh, low proportion of risk quarter assets compared to the industry, partially because of the gold loan portfolio is high now bank. Uh, shareholder value creation on, on a nine-month basis, we had an attractive EPS, book value per share, ROI and ROI underlines our firm commitment towards the maximization of shareholder wealth. Book value per share touched 200 rupees. EPS as on 31-12-23 on a nine-month nine annualized basis is 31.78, ROE 17.29%. In conclusion, I would like to say that market is offering ample opportunities for banks to grow the asset book. In order to tap the same, banks have to ensure sufficient liquidity and funds. The tight liquidity conditions prevailing in the market, which is in the deficit mode now, is making the job tougher for the banks. Cost of deposits and borrowings is at an elevated level. Banks have to carefully manage multiple factors like CD ratio, LCR, NSFR, means, etc. Fortunately, most of these uh, uh, criteria we have fared pretty well in this quarter. Hope by this time you might have gone through our numbers uploaded on our website. Here, we sincerely believe that we have had done exceptionally well under the given circumstances as we could balance the growth, cost, and liquidity aspects in a tight liquidity and competitive environment with most of the ratios uh, showing an improvement. We look forward to doing better in this quarter as well. Lastly, the recent recognition I want to talk about as the best bank, we got the best bank award in the uh, small category in the prestigious mean BSFI award, BFSI award in 2023. And the commencement of CBS migration project are propelling us resolutely towards fulfillment of our vision, SBS 2030, wherein we aspire to become one of the most respectable mid-sized banks. We have just uh, uh, launched our uh, CVS project. Uh, we are uh, uh, probably one of the first banks to do um, uh, Oracle, OXA, OGL all together in one transition at one go. And we'll be leveraging our full service banking license and building a pan-India franchise. We will also be pursuing the branch expansion as a key strategy to fuel the growth. Our management team is now complete, and uh, the entire senior management uh, team has joined, uh, including uh, listened induction in, um, in the CRO position, in the uh, treasury position, and also we uh, had our uh, wholesale banking head, uh, who has just joined us now. With that, we expect that or wholesale, SME, gold, and retail. All of that will be the future cylinders of growth of the bank in coming years. With that, uh, I will open uh, this conference for question. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mona Ketan from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Hi, good morning. evening. And congratulations on a good set of numbers. Um, so my first question is on growth. So if I compare versus last quarter, what you gave in your PPT, uh, the uh, uh, segmental uh, uh, loan book, 
uh, the SME growth has been flattish. So, how are you looking at it? Uh, how have been the disbursement trends here? And uh, is it more to do with the rundown that you've been alluding to uh, in the portfolio? Uh, thank you, Anna, for your question on gold. Also, you asked the growth question, is it? I didn't get the exact question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to understand the growth. So, if I look at Q on Q, uh, which is last quarter versus this quarter, the SME growth was flattish, growth in the SME book. Uh, so, I'm just trying to understand, uh, 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 you know, because this is your core portfolio, um, why are you seeing a flattish growth? And if it has to do something with the rundown in the portfolio that you've been alluding to some time back. And if you could give us some color on the disbursements in this book. So uh, let me answer the gold question first. So uh, yes, I think we had a 23% a, a growth year on year on gold. And, uh, uh, and uh, we actually, uh, in terms of disbursement, uh, we had a relatively uh, muted uh, quarter on the gold side. There are two reasons for that. We just wanted to balance the portfolio a little bit more between gold and, and on gold because with this growth also gold is touching more for eight percent of our portfolio, uh, and and hence we need a more balanced portfolio. Uh, the second thing is on gold, our LTV we have remained focused on gold with a uh, seventy-four uh, percent LTV. And when you look at that kind of LTV, there are a lot of players in the market who are willing to give higher LTV, but we don't want to take a higher risk because I still think that gold, though gold, world, uh, global gold prices has come down slightly only, but still it is reasonably elevated. So given that, we don't want to take a higher uh, uh, LTV on gold at this point of time. That's why we are uh, cautious on that side. And uh, thirdly, uh, we had put a lot of um, uh, implementations on the gold from a system perspective. And uh, that, uh, because of those kind of implementations, uh, we uh, have uh, slowed down certain portfolio in the gold on side, which we would like to uh, continue to do. And because the other side of the portfolio, whether it is wholesale, SME, uh, retail, etc., is starting to pick up now gradually. So we want to kind of uh, uh, manage the gold loan with a lesser risky, more compliant, and uh, kind of a, uh, with a price volatility, volatility we should be able to manage. So that's the reason we'll see that our gold loan uh, uh, LTV has been reasonably stable, well below 75%. Coming to your question on SME, I think we have grown by around 28% year on year. Uh, quarter to quarter, obviously, things can happen because there are certain times when, uh, uh, you know, because what has happened is, and I'll tell you the issue on both wholesale and SME. You didn't ask me the wholesale, but let me also say that wholesale also gets slowed down a little bit and sent to some extent SME because we had seen that the cost of funding is going up in the system. And uh, given our a mean kind of a, uh, objective. We actually didn't want to do uh, businesses which would be very, very competitive in terms of interest rate. Uh, because then what will happen is interest rates will be uh, lesser. And you know that SME is generally linked to T bill. And uh, six months down the line, seven months down the line, who knows when interest rate starts uh, falling again. That time, uh, because of its uh, uh, link to not TV, it's uh, link, link to repo rate. So when it is linked to repo rate, immediately the repo rate falls. You have to reprice the reprice the SME portfolio, and and I don't see given the liquidity challenges on the liability side that and with still the repricing on uh, fixed deposits going up, I don't think the cost of funds have seen the bottom yet. Uh, you know. So uh, to that extent, um, peak yet, uh, you mean? Of, peak yet, yeah. Cost of funds not seen the peak yet, so it may continue to go up a little bit more. Given that we wanted to do business only what makes sense for us from a mean and a profitability perspective, that's why you'll see that both on the asset, uh, SME book as well as on the wholesale book, we had not done a few businesses which would have otherwise uh, picked up. Uh, also, the old book, SME book. Uh, has started running off, which is normally which happens, but this quarter also there has been a run off. So uh, uh, there was around 170, 180 crores of 
uh, runoff which happened this quarter on the SME side. So uh, given, uh, sorry, what is this? 18 crore of runoff we had, sorry. We had a, a 18 crore of runoff on the SME side this quarter. So given that perspective, I think overall the growth is uh, uh, relatively muted. This is also deliberate, and all this contributed towards a 23% growth year on year uh, on uh, on the bank. The service uh, generally what we do around 27, 28%. This was, and this also has helped us in having a maintaining a CD ratio of uh, below 83%. Last quarter the CD ratio was above 87%. Our LCR is uh, PDR end is 123%. And average is 113 percent. So all these decisions helped us in managing a more balanced growth, with an eye on how the funding cost is going to go up and how the linked uh, books will have a challenge in terms of maintaining. So that's broadly what a very prudent decision we took, both on wholesale as well as on SME business. Uh, got that, sir. That's very clear. Just one small aspect on growth. So. Um, uh, within other retail, uh, I just want to understand what is driving growth. Is it mostly secured assets? In retail? I yeah, think, when, uh, when we look at other retail, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think two or three products are doing very well for us. One is uh, uh, on the auto loan side. Uh, uh, one is on the auto loan side. One is on the inventory funding is doing well for us. CBCE, commercial vehicles and commercial equipment is doing for us, and uh, LAP is doing well for us. So these are the four products which is doing well for us. Credit cards also, because it was on a zero base, it is uh, doing well on a year-on-year -year basis because we started credit cards this year only with alliance with two partners. And uh, while we had grown the uh, unsecured business in the till the Q2 of this year, uh, uh, but this quarter we have significantly slowed down our unsecured business based on whatever we are here in the market. And hence, uh, this quarter onwards, which is Q3 onwards, we have almost slowed down to minimum our unsecured side of the business, not because any issue in the portfolio, because it's too nascent the portfolio to have any problems at all, but uh, because what you're hearing in the ecosystem, we have completely slowed down the uh, personal loan business. Got that, sir. So my second question is uh, uh, coming to the deposit bid. So um, you had earlier alluded to you know your comfort level with around 90% uh, uh, of uh, CD ratio on the peak side, and uh, we have this quarter seen a uh, sharp decline in CD ratios. So would that uh, comfort zone come down here on because we're hearing uh, a lot uh, that you know RBI has been. Um, guiding banks to lower their CD ratio levels. So what's your take on that? On the CD ratio, RBI has said nothing to us yet. Okay. Uh, but we looked at two things. We looked at the incremental CD ratio, and uh, that's where uh, it went beyond my comfort level. So we have to look at many ratios, just not CD ratio. We looked at the incremental CD ratio, and that was uncomfortable to me. So I said that, we will bring down the incremental CD ratio, which automatically will bring the CD ratio down. Secondly, uh, I said 90% is a comfort zone in a comfortable environment when business as usual, everything is fine. But that may not be right when you have a 3 lakh crore uh, uh, liquidity deficit. I'm a very risk averse person. Mm -hmm. So given that perspective, in that environment, because on a small balance sheet like that, these percentages can swing big time this way, that way in a very short span of time. So I would be adding on the side of portion, which would impact my name, which would impact my, because all this money which is there will go into investments, which has uh, almost negative yield, right, right now. Uh, because these will come uh, around repo rate and things like that, but your funding cost is higher than that. But still I said that uh, liquidity risk also a risk in the system, and given the situation, what it is, how do we know what happens next year? So given that, I think we took a conscious call saying that let's wait and watch for a while, it's not that we targeted 83%. It, I mean, I wish we could do that. It is just that we said that we don't want to do business below a certain rate and with a certain kind of a risk. So once we stop doing that, automatically we reached a level of 83% on city ratio. Is, is it that we can go up to 85, 86%? Answer is yes. Okay. And hence, maybe this quarter will be a little more, a uh, little lesser cautious, let me put it this way. But uh, to ensure that we do not touch 90%, we needed to apply this caution, so we have applied this caution. 
got that sir and uh, uh, on the cost of fund side so how how when do you see it peaking could it easily uh, comfortably go up for the next two quarters as well given the liquidity environment yes so what will happen mona is completely depends on the uh, portfolio uh, tenor of uh, liquidity uh, uh, deposit tenor of portfolios right so uh, uh, so typically people who were sitting on a long tenor when this interest rate started going up those things will come for repricing uh, and people who are sitting on a short term tenor they are right repricing will have already happened so it depends on that situation which bank is where most of our tenors are typically around one one year for us and little lesser we don't have very long tenor uh, in this right now so i would say that give it another three months for us i think it will sort of peak hopefully okay but what we don't know is that this liquidity challenge is over because the problem is the incremental business i thought this quarter it has peaked but till the end of the quarter i saw also cover, uh, you know cd rates in the market uh, especially on the shorter term which is uh, 12 months and below is very very elevated so given that perspective it is very difficult to say that how the cost of funds will go so we are factoring in a situation where next 3 to 6 months it can still go up but for us the deposit repricing is then i think that will be over in the next 3 months sure so got that and just one final question on the credit cost front so we have we continue to see negative credit cost for the bank uh, for the last uh, couple of quarters so is this mostly driven by recovery from return of accounts and uh, how big is the return of pool as of now for the bank that that data may not be the public domain so but i i'll give you a sense of of your question mm-hmm. so this quarter is i mean we have been on a negative trade pass for a while now how many quarters i'm forgetting also okay mm-hmm. but uh, will it continue forever answer is no next year it may not continue at this level but even if you look at this quarter let's look at each of the parameters the slippages are significantly lower than last quarter okay Right. the uh, uh, the, uh, the the gross formation uh, is also significantly lower than last quarter the gnpa is lower the nnpa is lower okay so when you look at all the parameters and recovery is also slightly uh, lower than last quarter but still it is relatively okay okay given all this i think uh, we had a uh, very Uh, and this is happening when you are 106 crores of contingency provision plus another uh, almost 50 uh, 53 54 crores of provision because of our conservative provision norm so overall i think around 160 and 70 crores of uh, overall additional provision which is there in the system uh, not that we want to touch this contingency provision unless it is uh, uh, you know unless as per formula what we have done it is to be touched so to that extent we are really sitting on a very very safe quality portfolio and negative trade cost may not be forever but given that slippage is i think that is more important to me than uh, recovery based uh, negative trade cost that itself is uh, very very comfortable so on this front i think we are doing very very well got it sir thank you so much i'll come back in the queue all the best thank you mona thank you so much thank you Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. We have the next question from the line of Manan Tijorwala from ICICI Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi sir, good evening. I just had one question. Uh, sir, I see the yields have improved almost sixty-eight, seventy bps quarter on quarter. So, could you walk us through what exactly has changed from last quarter? Because last quarter we had some uh, gold loans that which we paid down, so that brought it down. So, how does it come back now? So, two things has happened, Manal. Thanks for your question. Uh, one is, as I said, that we took a very conscious call of not doing uh, businesses which will come at a low yield. Okay. uh because i looked at it this way that what is my incremental cost of deposits for the highest deposit uh, which i'm taking at highest cost deposit i'm taking uh, let's say that is a 8. some percent and i said if i take it that incremental business 
on an incremental basis, why do I need to take that uh, uh, business on the SME side or on the corporate side, which I just explained to Mona. So those businesses we refused. I said that uh, we'll not do businesses on averages. We'll do business on marginal costing, which are marginal uh, additions. So that's the, that's the way we actually very consciously improved our yield. On Golden also, if you see that last, last quarter, we ran off some of this uh, book. Okay, which were uh, coming at uh, uh, reasonable, but the re that we have started rebooking some of these businesses now because our uh, uh, what is it called LTV has now come down to a level where we wanted it to. So given that perspective, we could uh, start booking gold loan at a higher yield again because our LTV is at a comfortable level. But again, if you see our LTV going up to 78, 79, 80 percent, not because of our reason, but because of market reasons, which is price reasons. Uh, gold prices fall, then again our yield will start coming down. Because then again we will uh, slow down some of this portfolio, which will come at high yield and a higher yield. So that is the reason why this will be seasonal to some extent and will vary based on the gold gold prices. But primary reason for yield, yield increase is basically we refuse businesses which are coming at very low yield and very competitive yield, which are at an incremental cost, uh, uh, a marginal cost of uh, deposits. This is not making sense. But it's largely from the gold business, then, if I understand correctly, the increase that we're seeing now. No, no, no. Our yields have gone up in uh, retail, in gold, in uh, in in uh, SME also. Um, I think I think it has gone up all across. So uh, yield has been an overall overall story for us. Understood. So one more question on the Casa plus retail TV. How is the performance going, and how do you see it from here on? As in, if you could uh, say, if you could uh, talk about what it was at the same time last year versus this year now. So I'll tell you, we have grown CASA by 6%, but I will acknowledge, and I've told it in past also, that it will take us at least one more year to start building the CASA franchise, okay? Uh, because primarily we have been a golden franchise. Uh, so, uh, most of our customers has been uh, has not been uh, in that level where you can build a very strong CASA franchise. And uh, till we have the uh, uh, post system in place, while all other things are in place, like the branches, the distribution, the people, the leadership, the products are also in place now. But unless we have the system, I am not uh, willing to invest after acquiring so many customers where we cannot give the kind of a service and that kind of a thing which I guess or ISS or access can give. Then it will be difficult to build that franchise. So I'm keeping that franchise growth on the uh, uh, CASA, including CAR, uh, only after FY25 onwards. Till then, we'll depend on, to some extent, the uh, retail TD. Uh, it's not that CASA is not growing. CASA is growing, but only at that level, right? And that's the story of the industry also. They are growing slow, but we are growing slower. On the So what we're doing, we are saying that uh, deposit franchise we build FY25 onwards. Till then, to ensure we support our growth, we'll have a funding structure in place, okay? Now, the funding structure will be a combination of, uh, CASA will be a small portion of that, and we'll retain a growth of anywhere between uh, 5 to 15% or whatever. Uh, so the CASA, uh, 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 CASA percentage is not going to come up too much uh, if you continue to grow at a 20, 21% on the deposit side. Uh, but what will happen is that uh, we are looking at borrowings as another way. Uh, our CD book is also doing well. Uh, we have uh, depo uh, we have built uh, 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 slightly larger deposits based on our relationship. We have created a vertical on task and some of these other relationships. So while we are going the retail deposits, but at the same time we are building from the other deposits as well. So this will continue for another year or so, and then we'll start the liability franchise. I'm being very honest about it that uh, right now there's no point talking too much about the CASA and retail franchise still have our systems and processes in place. That will be in place and we have completely planned it out FY25 onwards. That's fair enough, sir. That's all for my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prabal from Ambit. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so my first question is uh, again on this deposit side. So, uh, so congratulations on uh, the kind of accretion mobilization that we saw during the quarter. Within term deposit, uh, are there particular schemes, say 190 day schemes or 500 day schemes, which is which is helping up uh, beef up uh, the mobilization? Yes, uh, uh, almost every bank has. We also have a particular bucket. And typically, most of the deposits gravitate towards that bucket, which is 400 and, uh, uh, how many days? 444 days. I think 444 days is our bucket, uh, where we get 7.75. 7.75. So uh, that kind of a uh, uh, bucket we have. Uh, so most of the uh, one-year class kind of a deposit is coming in that bucket. Having said that, uh, uh, there are deposits which also come with a slightly more elevated cost, also closer to 8%. And those are typically slightly larger ticket deposits, typical institutional deposits, etc. And also, we have to understand that in such a way, the entire design has happened between LCR, uh, NSFR, CASA uh, ratio, deposit growth, and CD ratio. The whole complexity is such that there is no escape of doing one kind of a business, you have to have a very balanced business. So I think I must give credit to the team that the way they have built up the entire business, that we have ticked almost all the boxes. Deposit growth, we have ticked. LCR, we have ticked. CD ratio, we have ticked. Only we have not ticked the CASA ratio. And I'm telling you, this will not get ticked for the next two years. Uh, cost of funds, we have ticked. Okay. So almost all the parameters we have ticked. So there must be something which you're doing right on the liability side of the business. In, in spite of the fact that we are not having our franchise, which will happen FY25 onwards. Thank you, sir. Uh, so then the second question will be uh, uh, going ahead in case, uh, you know, cost of funds rise for us, which is true for the system as well. Which are the, which are the segments on the loan side where we can pass on these higher cost of funds? Because gold loans typically are, uh, are quite volatile. They tend to be in the range of 11 to 11.5%. So are there some other segment that you have identified where you can pass on these rates? Yeah, so cost of funds has typically uh, uh, gone up by around 1% uh, or so in the last uh, one year. In the, on a nine-month basis, year-on-year basis, and uh, cost of deposits have almost gone up by 1.2, 1.3%. So roughly anything between 90 basis points to 130 basis points, depending on what kind of uh, cost of deposits we are talking about, has gone up, cost of funds we are talking about. Uh, how do we pass it on? Uh, answer is some we cannot. That's why you see that our NIM, in spite of the fact it is 5.11, 5.11, um, it was on a nine-month basis. Last year on a nine-month basis, it was 5.52. So 40 basis point uh, sacrifice on NIM has already happened on a nine-month basis. So we cannot pass on everything. Uh, having said that, I think it's a uh, if every business starts picking up a little bit, if uh, every, so the way I handle it on the execution side is very simple. I tell wholesale that if you are at this level, you have to get me 20 basis points more. Same thing I tell uh, uh, SME. So SME has actually given me a much higher yield this quarter. Okay. And uh, uh, same, and of course, gold loan also has gone up this quarter. So given that, I think it's that incremental part which would be more of an execution story. It's not that one side fits on. But uh, yes, there is some impact on the name which you can already see when you look at a year on year basis, roughly around uh, 40 to 50 basis points impact on the name. Okay, and this, and this, let's say 20 basis point higher on some segment, this is driven by a more, a more prudent or selective customer basis, or, or how do they, how, how are they able to generate more yields from the same portfolio? So it's very simple. What we said is that I said that below this rate, we will not do business. In fact, you will be uh, happy to know that there are a lot of banks, when I look at most of the results of the other banks, the uh, variation between yields between one portfolio or one customer to another portfolio and another customer is anywhere between 6, 7, 8% difference. For us, the highest yield is around 12%, lowest yield is around 9%. Uh, 8.7 or 8.9 or something like that. So our that range is very low, okay? Between uh, 3%, 3, 3.5%. Three uh, that's, uh, that's the way we operate in a very small range. So what it means is effectively, we are not taking the high risk, okay? And we are willing to uh, sacrifice business which comes at very, uh, where, where we think that 
the business ROI is not uh, right for our kind of a bank at this stage. Okay. Uh, some of the other banks can do it because they have other incomes, whether it's on the wealth side, whether it's in the transaction banking side. I'm not saying they're doing wrong business, they're doing the right business. But given the life cycle we are in right now, uh, because our cross sale opportunity into wholesale and SME is relatively lesser compared to some of these other large banks, so we have to primarily play the LDM. So we play in this 9 to 12% range. 12% uh, for gold loans, 12 or lesser than that. Actually, less than 12% here and more than 9% there. So in that range, we operate. So that's the way we do. So we refuse business, which doesn't make sense for us. But that does not mean we're taking higher risky business. We don't do business at 13, 14% also. And just, uh, uh, so, so let's say if the maximum is 12%. And with our OPEX to I said that. Maybe there are some agri business which can be slightly higher than that, some microfinance which can be slightly higher than that, but they are very, very small. In terms of contribution to the portfolio, it is very, very small. I'm taking out the agri and the microfinance business, but they are very small in terms of contribution to the bank. Sorry, your question. But which, yeah, uh, uh, but let's say with a, with, a, with a cost of funds of 5.5% and uh, OPEX to asset of 4%. So if you are doing business at 11% that is uh, hardly making us money and in an environment where credit cost is benign this could still be supported to us but as the as the environment normalized uh, could there be a risk of ROI of, of return ratios uh, getting diluted because of uh, this strategy so uh, let me put it this way i mean if you the way you are calculating then banking business would have never made sense so uh, uh, if you, uh, i can put a calculation on it said and say that in spite of all this i am having a mean of 5.11 percent right so uh, depends on which statistics you're looking at uh, plus when you look at roa we have uh, almost 1.8 percent roa uh, which also happens because now on the uh, on, on the on the fee side we have now almost 14% consistent basis. We are having 14% uh, uh, non-interest income to total interest income. This used to be on the core, core, core non-interest income. This used to be below 5% at some point of time in the bank. So it's how you create the ROA tree overall uh, and how you ensure that you manage the cost of funds and build the right business depending on what ROA you, you generate. So uh, I, I don't think that calculation works for us. Uh, because uh, uh, there will be businesses which also comes with lesser risk rates, okay? Uh, there will be businesses which comes with a, a lot more franchise building on the wholesale side in the long run. So, uh, so and also some of these are funded with lower tenor kind of uh, deposits also uh, from an ILM perspective. So it's more complicated than this, but net-net we are uh, saying that our uh, mean will be 5% for the full year or more. And next year, even if it comes down a little bit, it will not go down under 4.5 in any circumstances. ROA, we will be between 1.8 to uh, 2. And next year, we will be even in a difficult phase where our other businesses are picking up, which is uh, ROA is lesser, we will be between 1.5 to 1.8. So given that, I think that's the play we will play and uh, we should be able to deliver that. Understood. So this last one question. Uh, so you mentioned about balancing growth between gold loan portfolio and non-gold loan portfolio. So uh, which sort of segments this quarter we did see detail picking up uh, by 5% sequentially. Going ahead, which segments uh, would you say that are ready for now uh, growth traction and we should start seeing pick up there as well? See, for another two years, we are in love with gold. So gold will continue to do well because it doesn't um, uh, take away the risk. I mean, it doesn't need uh, risk quite much. It has high yield. Our uh, losses are, uh, uh, the NPA in gold loan is lesser than the bank level NPA, which itself is only 31 basis points. And gold loan is much lesser than that. So, and uh, cost of operations is high, but that is already baked into the system. So as long as these equations are there, we'll continue to focus on gold loan and do that business. I'm not saying, I said in the long run, my FY30 gold loan will come down to 20 or percent, not because we'll be focus on gold loan, because all other businesses will start picking up after system starts delivering, you know, which will start from FY25 onwards. Having said that, other than gold loan, which of the portfolio will start doing well, uh, this year was muted in wholesale. I think FY25 onwards, FY25 uh, onwards, 
our wholesale will start picking up. SME will uh, significantly pick up. Already SME is showing a 28% growth this year for the first time in a long period. I think they are uh, fully engaged to take the growth further. And uh, retail on a small base will grow much, much faster. But it, will it materially contribute? Answer is uh, maybe no, because ultimately the, it is only a 9% mix. 9 going to 10 uh, or, uh, won't make too much of a difference. And also some of the businesses which we uh, didn't do so well, like uh, Agri, MFI, and all this this year, Agri, we actually didn't grow much. So some of these businesses will start picking up next year. So overall, I think we should be able to grow. Growth in assets is not a problem for us. Our constraint will be, can we grow liability at higher, uh, more than 20% consistently with a reasonable cost? So that is something we have to notice. If we are able to grow that, we'll be able to grow by uh, proportionately. In, uh, in uh, Then we have to choose which one we want to grow. So constraint is liability. Constraint is not growth on the asset side. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, all these elaborate answers. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. To, uh, uh, this first one would be what would be the increase in the rates that we've uh, you know, passed on to the NBFC uh, given the increase in the risk weightage. And uh, second question would be on the retail loan side, what uh, you know, share of the book is unsecured, which you refer to, you know, you slowed down a bit this quarter. What is the second question, unsecured? What is the share of unsecured loans to the total book? Okay, so uh, on the first question, let me tell you that uh, uh, this, uh, huh. so this, uh, I mean, yes, RBI did raise that 25 basis point uh, on MBS risk but we have not did, uh, passed it on as such, you know, unless there is a renewal happening or something happening, we have not deliberately passed it on. Uh, because my thinking is like this, if there is a risk somewhere, why take high risk? Okay, so I, so what we have got is we have got a little more cautious and seeing that which is the kind of NBFC is, because what is it? It is a translated risk. If there is, hypothetically, if there is a risk that is emerging in the unsecured space and small ticket unsecured space, and if certain NBFCs are doing business there in a large amount, then, uh, and if we lend there, then it's a translated risk which is coming back to us, right? So that's the challenge. So we have started getting a lot more careful on this kind of NBFCs where this kind of business are happening. And we have refused a lot of these businesses this quarter. So we have taken it more from a risk guidance perspective than a yield maximization perspective. We have not done that, okay? Uh, secondly, uh, going ahead, I think uh, while our NBFC proportion is slightly high uh, in our uh, wholesale book, but we have taken a conscious call of actually growing the other uh, portfolio and which will automatically bring on the NGFC as a part of our uh, this thing. So that's the way we are going to manage this. We are taking the RBI direction not as a uh, yield maximization, but as a uh, uh, risk management tool. Uh, on the second question on unsecured to total, uh, what is it, Satish? No, uh, uh, we don't uh, have this information in the public domain. Uh, in terms of what is the total unsecured, but if you look at the overall book composition, 48% is a gold loan, which is anyway fully secure. Okay. Then uh, within detail also, uh, quite a few products which we are doing are secure, like PVC and all, are all secure. Overall for the bank, it is not more than 2-3%. Yeah. Yeah. Even SME also is a secure business. So it is very small kind of a percentage. So I'll tell you your simple answer. Our unsecured book in the whole bank is well below 5%. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Shivaji Tapliar from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So my question is uh, really uh, regarding some uh, having some more color on uh, the you know SME uh, you know broader SME segment. So just wanted to understand uh, you know what are 
uh, the sub segments within uh, you know sme and uh, what are the ticket sizes and uh, what is, what is the yield uh, maybe uh, for those uh, sub segments and um, you know between these sub segments would are you getting the sense as you are piloting uh, you know initiatives that you know maybe one segment is more attractive for you to do at this point in time uh, over the next couple of years just some color around uh, you know uh, what is uh, happening within uh, you know the sme segment and um, also you know on the retail side while well, you have answered you know which are the segments that you are uh, seeing traction um, but maybe from a long term perspective uh, you know what will be some of your bread and butter uh, retail segments uh, will it be affordable housing uh, you know which part of vehicle finance and you know some color on you know the sub segment uh, within a semi in detail uh, would be helpful yeah thank thanks you ji uh, for both the questions both are very critical questions so let me answer the retail first then i will invite uh, our head of sme shamani to give you a full color of the same business that is building uh, on the retail side again because you said long term so i will divide into short medium and long long term our retail group will exactly look the way the industry looks at it home loans personal loans auto loans credit cards all of that in those kind of proportion because fundamentally the way we will build our retail portfolio is based on how our liability franchise is getting built which means that customer getting acquired cross selling to them is we are not going to go out and buy uh, retail business through bss and all this uh, external uh, kind of channels so if that does not happen our retail book will mirror how the customer franchise is building and based on the cross sell to this this is how i had built businesses always this is how we'll build it here in the short run till the franchise liability franchise starts picking up which will uh, take one one or two years till then we are doing businesses primarily to our internal customers also we are building bridge with the uh, with the manufacturers with the you know end customers directly etc and hence short term is mirroring those kind of products like our auto uh, see uh, commercial equipments commercial vehicles um, you know loan against properties uh, sorry uh, so healthcare business so these are very niche direct to customers and you can uh, address this segment in a in a in a in a, in a uh, because this is not distributed segments this is a very concentrated segments so you can address this customers and with a value added services you can with the manufacturer tie up you can do this business so that's primarily where our focus in the short term is but medium to long term will be exactly mirroring the franchise will build on the liability uh, side of the business that's the way we'll do uh, retail asset business the typical uh, classical and uh, classical way of building that business on the sme side uh, 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 you talked about the yield and all that so uh, on the yield i think we are somewhere between 10 to 11% on the yield in sme group okay uh, rest of the thing segmentation etc let's like shaman yeah. thank you thank you uh, hi good evening all uh, this is sham here so just to uh, give an outlay brief in terms of uh, you know the way we have started scaling up on sme business yeah if i look at purely on a uh, top line growth to growth only on disbursement both fund based and non fund based put together we have grown 108 percentage uh, as we speak so on the net growth is what it's, it's hovering around the 28 percentage uh, at this point of time of course there's been a late pickup because we were uh, working on setting up our process systems and uh, the platforms right and also some of the policy upgradation which we need to do which we have done and post that you are starting to see a momentum uh, in the business so because if i to compare up by 23 we had ended up at around 5 percentage it is currently you know it's moved up to 28 percentage so quarter on quarter there is an upside uh, movement in the overall net sme book as well so this year uh, as we speak on a fund based alone on a overall disbursement we have done 1066 crores in fund based so limit set and uh, both non fund based and fund based put together is 1456 crores so that obviously talks about uh, there's been a stress on the existing book in terms of uh, some clients we had wanted it to attract and some client due to interest rate pressure we have to let go as uh, pale was mentioning that we're not compromising on the e and that's why overall the momentum and, and the uh, book growth 
is been in line with our expectation. So specifically on the ticket size, which you asked, uh, the new to bank uh, ticket size is around uh, six crores, and the overall uh, ticket size at the portfolio level will be around three to three point uh, four crores. Uh, so we follow an hub and spoke model, branch uh, uh, centric, uh, where SME clusters been identified and the key branches been identified. So we focus on the top 32 branches. Within that, um, uh, we we focus on top 20 branches as catalyst, and the next 22 branches as uh, as prime branches, and around that uh, we work with trade bodies, industry association in terms of engaging with them, so that um, we go and reach out to them with an industry solution. So we had certain knowledge banking, uh, uh, you know, advisory types as well, so that there could be a value add uh, to these association and industries. So primarily the focus uh, sector for us is manufacturing, within manufacturing, life engineering as well as automobile, healthcare, pharma. Food processing and to some extent textile and uh, textiles and apparels, and that's the way the progress has been. And we are very very positive about further growth on this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, for answering that. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, my next question was around uh, operating expenses. Uh, so I mean, while you have given a, a, an ultra long term guidance that you know. Uh, uh, cost to income ratio will uh, decline, you know, several years later. But uh, just how, uh, you know, what is the composition of the cost at this point in time? I mean, how much of uh, that may be technology investments, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, for how long will these technology investments kind of continue? And, uh, you know, when will they start to taper off? What, uh, so just... Uh, some uh, understanding of the glide path when it comes to operating expenses would be helpful. Yeah. So uh, there are three primary costs if you look at the cost line. One is PP, uh, one is uh, infrastructure distribution and all this, and third one is technology. So these are the three primary uh, cost lines for us. Uh, within that, as you rightly said, that technology is a highly front-ended investment because we are rebuilding and rebooting the bank from our infrastructure perspective, technology as well as other infrastructure. And But the only thing is, a lot of this is capex, so it will flow through the PNL over the next four or five years. Okay, uh, But most of these investments will be done in the next two years. Okay, And then only MCs and some add-ons here and there will keep happening, uh, which are like OPEX at that level, uh, post two, three years. So so it will go through for the next four or five years, but it will start start tapering off maybe FY 27, 28 onwards, and then and then it's a payback period for technology starting from FY 27, 28 onwards, and hence the cost to income will severely taper off uh, to below 50 percent by FY 30, to below 50 percent. Uh, coming to other two costs, which is distribution cost, typically uh, we will add around 75 to 100 branches every year, uh, which as a percentage, will keep going down as the branches go, start picking up. And uh, and on the manpower side, uh, uh, that, that cost will keep in because we want to keep investing on the uh, acquisition side. Because once we have the technology ready for building the retail franchise, uh, our manpower uh, cost will continue to elevate, but not at the same level. We are somewhere around 35 37%. Uh, uh, growth, I think, in uh, manpower, around 40% growth in manpower. Cost is around, cost growth will be somewhere close to 30%, I think. But that will start tapering off in two, three years because, uh, especially when you have a ratio of cost to income, because as the wholesale starts picking up and the SME starts picking up, then uh, on a cost to income basis, those are low cost to income businesses, right? Especially wholesale is a low cost to income businesses. Once that mix starts going up and revenue starts coming from there, then cost to income also starts tapering off. So, given these three situations, also on branches, not only percentage of branches growth will start coming down, some of these branches are investing will start uh, breaking even uh, within two to three years of setting up. And that also will start tapering off. So we have done all these calculations, and that's where we are saying that how we are confident that by FY30 our cost income will be well below 50%. And currently for the next one, one and a half years, it will remain around 65% or, percent or close to it. And then it will start tapering off maybe by FY25, 26 onwards, uh, uh, below 60%, and then below 50% by FY30.
Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one if you wish to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I just wanted to understand again on the previous uh, the cost to income side. Uh, like you mentioned, we have this, uh, where, where does it peak? You know, does, uh, I mean, uh, or I think Flex will be implementing now, so that will get implemented by when, and uh, is that, you know, 65 the peak, or do we see it going beyond that uh, in the short term? No, so uh, see, see, this is hovering between 60 to 65 right now. So we are very close to 65 uh, quarter to back. Now we are back to somewhere around 62 percent. But this will keep happening because of uh, either income or cost because it's a ratio at the end of the day. So we are seeing between 60 to 65 we will hover. But for sure it will start on a glide path uh, starting FY 25, 26 onwards. And then it will go to uh, below 60 and then below 50 by FY 30. That's what I said. But right now it will fluctuate a little bit because of on that quarter how it has gone in terms of income and cost and things like that. Mm -hmm. But for sure the, the technology cost will be hitting us for the next two years. So the tech spend would be what percentage of PBT? Any number? Or like I think for the large banks it's around nine ten percent. For us it could be. It will add on. It will be uh, well above that. Right. And so the absolute amount will, uh, like, I mean, like you said, the in, you know, on the income side, you can have other incomes. So on the absolute amount, would you have some uh, guidance, right? Uh, you know, the increase in the absolute amount for the mix. We know that number, we know that number but we uh, don't give it in public domain. But it's a, right. it's a significantly higher uh, percentage compared to what you just mentioned for the next okay. two, three years. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mona Khetan from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. <clears throat> I just had uh, one query on the uh, fee income side. So we have seen a strong growth on the fee side in the last few quarters. Uh, but I'd, I just want to check whether we still have more levers. Um, are we already seeing a good contribution from uh, lines like transaction banking, or that's yet to play out for the bank? Uh, very good question, Mona. So the transaction banking side, we have just started. The TFX uh, income will continue to grow as our wholesale side of the business and the SME side of the business starts doing the sophisticated conversations with customers, and that will happen now. So transaction banking fee will start going up from next year much more. We have set up the team. Uh, and in terms of percentage, you will see that we are around hovering between 13 to 15 percent. Last quarter was exception, but generally we will be happy within this range because most of the other banks are in this range, except for some large banks who are in the 17 percent range. Uh, this is where our sweet spot is around 15. We were five actually. So from there, once we have reached there, the, uh, the, the easy job is done. Now, how we go from 14 to 17? Uh, on a consistent basis is the next journey. We'll be happy to there. I think we'll achieve that also at some stage. Uh, but uh, also we must understand that right now, NI is also a little muted right now. So because of that, the ratio sometimes also, the ratio is a very funny subject. No? So uh, now NII also starts picking up, which is good news for us is if uh, non-interest income also goes up, interest income also goes up or overall in, uh, income goes up. So that is fine. But generally our sweet spot is between 13 to 17. Sure, sir. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Shivaji Tapriyal from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, just one uh, clarification. Uh, uh, you pointed out that uh, the tax spend is more than uh, the figure that was, uh, you know, uh, quoted by the previous part, one of the previous participants. Uh, so uh, the nine percent figure uh, that was quoted, uh, you know, uh, is to be taken as a proportion of total OPEX or PBT. I mean. Uh, so I, I thought you said PBT. You said TVG said, no? 
PBT. So it's more than nine percent of PBT. So how much will it? So it may not be more than nine percent of total opex. Or uh, what would you peg it at as? No, no, I I re only responded Shivaji to the question which was asked that some of the other large banks are around nine percent of PBT. What I'm saying is that ours will be higher than that at this point of time. May not be forever, but at least for the next uh, two three yeah. years. Yeah, right. but just to clarify, I think the nine percent figure, the ballpark that we have been noticing in other conference calls, is as a proportion of total opex and, and not uh, not PBT. Oh. Okay, okay, but I calculated as a PBT, so we'll be higher than the PBT. On the total opex, what is the uh, what is our opex? Total uh, income is about five hundred. No, no, opex is saying. What is the total opex? Three hundred. Oh, then it will be much higher than that. Okay, <laughs> much much higher. No, it's much so higher than nine percent of total opex. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is for the quarter of the year. So this is the for the quarter. I think. Oh, there is a quarter. No, no, no. Then it will not be. It will be around that number, close to that number. Understood. I because I reacted. I thought it is talking about the PBT. If it is OPEX, nine percent of OPEX, then our ballpark will be there somewhere there. Understood. Okay. Thank you for the response. Um, I'm done with my questions. Thank you. We have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shivaji. Thank you, everybody, for participating in our uh, conference call. And look forward to our even more exciting Q4. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Yes Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>